Okay, so this is gonna be my most exciting video as we will not just talk about my favorite topic of large language models but also will show how they are being used in my favorite game Minecraft. Prepare to witness how this combination takes your Minecraft adventure to a new, whole new level. With the help of advanced large, large language models like OpenAI's GPT-4, players can now interact with the game in ways they never imagined. From generating complex quests and dialogues to creating dynamic storylines and immersive narratives, large language models bring an unprecedented level of depth and creativity to the Minecraft universe. This all is possible due to Voyager, an open-ended embodied agent with large language models. In this video, we're gonna dive deeper into the model see how the agent learns on its own Minecraft and see some exciting footage of Minecraft. But before we do that, please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Let's go. Also call this project as MindDojo. MindDojo features a simulation suite with thousands of open-ended and language prompted tasks like a scoop, a bucket of lava. Build an ether portal and enter it, visit an end city, traverse different terrains, the AI gen can freely explore a precisely generated 3D world with diverse terrains to roam, materials to mine, tools to craft, structures to build, and wonders to discover. And this is all done through AI. We all know Minecraft is the most successful video game in history. It has more than 100 million active players. As such, the amount of data collected is huge as well. MindDojo model used this massive amount of data collected from the internet. There were three main sources of data. YouTube videos, 730,000 YouTube videos with 2.2 billion words in transcript. These videos included lessons on Minecraft, gameplays and advanced Minecraft skills. An agent learns from all these videos. Second source was wiki pages. The wiki pages cover almost every aspect of the game mechanics and supply a rich of a source of unstructured knowledge in multimodal tables, recipes, illustrations and step-by-step -step tutorial. They scrapped 7000 pages that interleave texts, images, tables and diagrams. To preserve the layout information, they also save the screenshot of entire pages and extract bounding boxes of the visual element. The third one was Reddit. They collected 340,000 Reddit posts along with 6.6 .6 million comments under the R Minecraft subreddit. These posts ask questions on how to solve certain tasks, showcase cool architectures and achievements in image video snippets and discuss general tips and tricks for players of all expertise levels. Large language models can be fine-tuned on the Reddit corpus to internalize uh, Minecraft specific concepts and develop sophisticated strategies. So the classical approaches generally employ reinforcement learning and imitation learning that operates on primitive actions. As such, they can be challenge challenging for systematic exploration, interpretability, and generalization. So Voyager is the first LLM here, which which embodied lifelong learning agent capabilities with that drives exploration, master a wide range of skills, and make new discoveries continuously. It has three main components: an automatic curriculum that maximizes the exploration. A skill library for storing and retrieving complex behaviors and a new prompting mechanism that generates executable code for embodied control. So you can see the executable code here. Voyager interacts with a black box LLM. In this case, they have used GPT-4 through prompting and in-context learning. Voyager attempts to solve the progressively hard task proposed by the automatic curriculum, which takes into account the exploration progress and the agent state. The curriculum is generated by GPT-4 based on the overreaching goal of discovering new as many as diverse items as possible. This approach can be perceived as an in-context form of novelty search. So if you look at here, uh, so automatic curriculum capitalizes on internet scale knowledge within GPT-4 by prompting it to provide new tasks. The prompts includes uh, basically directives encouraging diverse behavior and imposing constraints, agent current state, so like inventory like oak planks are three sticks four crafting table one and those kind of information uh, previously completed or failed tasks and additional context using gpt 3.5 and wiki so you can add extra 
they also add extra information using GPT 3.5 and wiki to make it more diverse. For the skill skill library, skill library they represent each skill with a code. So in this case, you can see the async function. So each each skill is represented by a code. Input to GPT 4 consists of guidelines for code generation, control primitive APIs, environmental feedback, agent current state, and chain of thought prompting. So in this example, so like this is prompt and program generated by GPT-4. So they basically are generating a program, then it passes, uses GPT-3.5, and then it performs, generates the skill library and adds it. Each time GPT-4 generates and verifies a new skill, they add it to the skill library presented by a vector database. The key is the embedding vector of the program description, while the value of the program is, value is the program itself. So this is for the skill library. If you look at the environmental feedback, so this is this is an environmental feedback where it says I cannot make stick because it needs two more plants. So this is the code that GPT-4 generates. So GPT-4 realizes it needs two more plants before crafting sticks. In the right execution error, GPT-4 realizes it should craft a wooden X instead of an acacia X since there is no acacia X in Minecraft. So this is how they actually use the code to and GPT-4 to generate uh, generate the skill. They leverage OpenAI's GPT-4 and GPT-3.5 for text completion, along with text embedding ADA for text embeddings. They've set the temperature in entire experiment to zero except for the automatic curriculum, which uses 0.1 for to increase task diversity. The simulation environment is built on top of MindDojo and leverages MindFlavor JavaScript API for motor controls. They use GPT-4 uh, and obviously GPT-4 is very expensive so they mostly, in fact it is 15x times more expensive than GPT-3.5 so they only use GPT-4 for code generation and leverage GPT-3.5 to self-ask questions to provide additional context. Control primitive APIs were implemented in skill library. They use chain of thought prompting by asking GPT-4 to first explain the reason why the code from the last round fails, then give step-by-step -step plan to finish the task and finally generate code. Voyager discovers new Minecraft items and skills continuously by self-driven exploration significantly outperforming the baselines. But there were no baseline algorithms that work out of the box for Minecraft, so they executed some of other algorithms for comparison on MindDojo. These algorithms include React, Reflection, and AutoGPT. React uses chain of thought prompting by generating both reasoning traces and action plans with LLMs. Reflection is built on top of React and with self-reflection to infer more intuitive future actions. They provided it with the execution plan and self-verification module. The third was AutoGPT, which uh, automates NLP tasks by decomposing a high-level goal into multiple sub-goals and executing them in a React-style loop. Voyager is able to traverse two to three times longer distances compared to baselines while crossing diverse terrains. It also has significantly better exploration, constant tech tree mastery, and extensive map traversal. Efficient zero-shot in generalization to unseen tasks and also perform better than baselines. So, Voyager is the latest and the most advanced model when it comes to Minecraft and uh, trying to replicate Minecraft behavior, game style. That's all from our side. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know if you want me to cover any other specific model.